Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Megan Schaefer and Alexander Stevens? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Megan Schaefer was born sometime around 1996 and grew up in Ridgely, West Virginia. She moved to Maryland to attend Frostburg State University. She found a job at a Bath and Body Works. While in college, she met a man named Alexander Stevens, who went by the name Alex. The couple started dating, although later Megan said they were not technically dating. Alex was born in 1992 and raised in Cumberland, Maryland. He played musical instruments and was active in theater. Alex had an interest in finding ways to increase his spiritual awakening. He struggled with his consumption of alcohol and was ejected from the Coast Guard Academy. After this, he moved back home and attended Frostburg State University. He was studying materials engineering and economics. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On the evening of January 3, 2017, Megan and Alex drove in separate vehicles to the Savage River State Forest, which is in Garrett County, Maryland. They went to a cliff called High Rock. For reasons that are not clear, the couple engaged in bizarre behavior. Alex poured motor oil on the outside of his vehicle and left the hood up. He left a cat and a pet carrier not far from where he parked his vehicle. And Alex and Megan placed candles along the trail. It appears as though they had the intent of burning personal belongings as part of some type of cleansing ritual. On the morning of January 4, Megan called 911 from a residence and claimed that she had fallen off a cliff and was injured. She had broken into a house through a basement door in an effort to reach a phone. Evidently, the house was empty. She told the operator that she was hurt and lying on a couch in the living room of the house. When emergency personnel arrived, they noticed that Megan was naked, had numerous injuries, including to her shoulder and back, and was hypothermic. Megan had made a reference to Alex Stevens, saying that he was still in the woods. She believed that he was dead. The police conducted a search and found Alex's body a mile and a half from the base of the cliff at High Rock. He was face down in a drainage ditch, and his throat was cut. There was a kitchen knife next to his head. Here's what Megan told the police on January 4 when she was being treated in a hospital emergency room. She and Alex went for a hike to participate in some type of cleansing ritual. Alex asked Megan to remove her clothing, and she did. He removed his clothing as well. They both walked to the edge of the cliff at High Rock. She said that they slipped and fell 20 to 30 feet. The actual distance based on the area she described was about 33 feet. They were injured and in pain. They were unable to climb back up, so they walked down the mountain. Alex used a knife to cut his throat. Megan indicated that she did not hurt Alex. The next day, January 5, Megan spoke to the police again. She stood by her original story, saying that they both had slipped and fallen off the cliff, and Alex's injuries were self-inflicted. A third interview was conducted on January 6, after Megan contacted the police, saying that she wanted to clear some things up. Now her story changed a bit. Megan said that Alex pulled her off the cliff with him. At the bottom, he forced her to hold the knife as he fell on it. Before this interview was over, Megan once again modified her story. She told the police that Alex held her hand and pulled the knife across his throat several times. She suggested that Alex may have jumped off the cliff instead of falling off, like the action was deliberate. The medical examiner concluded that Alex's cause of death was sharp force injuries to the neck. There were at least seven sawing motions visible. The medical examiner did not believe the wounds could have been self-inflicted because Alex had been severely injured from traveling off the cliff. The manner of death was ruled homicide. Megan was charged with a few offenses, including second-degree murder. 
On March 19, 2018, Megan was found guilty of second-degree murder. She was sentenced to the maximum penalty of 30 years in prison. Now moving to my analysis. Megan Schaefer maintains her innocence. Some people believe that she was a cold-blooded killer. Others believe that Alex's behavior led to his death. Megan was a confused young woman who became involved with a disturbed young man. Let's take a look at the evidence, both for and against the idea that Megan was guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. A week before Alex died, he transferred $188,000 to a financial firm and listed Megan Schaefer as the beneficiary of his new account. This gave Megan a financial incentive for murder. Two days before his death, Alex had a positive conversation with a friend and mentioned his plans to get a college degree. Other people also believe that Alex was future-oriented. Alex died as a result of having his throat cut. The injury was inflicted by a knife, which was found near him. Alex was too badly injured to have caused the damage to his throat with a knife by himself. This means that somebody else must have done it, and it appears as though Megan was the only other person in the area. When Megan was being transported to the hospital, she told an emergency responder that her fingerprints may be on the knife. The injuries to Alex's neck were severe, much more than was necessary to kill him. If Megan was simply trying to fulfill the wishes of Alex, why was he so horribly cut? The injuries were consistent with rage. Megan supplied multiple stories to the police. Why did she keep changing her story? In her various statements, Megan made claims that were difficult to believe, like Alex forced her to hold the knife as he fell on it, and he held her hand and made her cut him with the knife. The injuries that Alex sustained, which were not related to the knife, were consistent with falling 33 feet off the cliff. But with Megan's injuries, it's not as clear. Perhaps Megan pushed Alex off the cliff, and her injuries were caused by attacking him a few moments later. Like she pushed him off, walked down to the base of the cliff, and then killed him. Now moving to the exculpatory factors. Alex had a long history of unusual and destructive behavior. A few examples. He used substances, including alcohol and LSD. Alex had anger problems and once smashed a guitar into a television set. He believed that he was the Messiah who needed to build a group of followers. And Alex would go to cemeteries and have picnics with ferrets. Bringing these three items together is curious because there is no combination of even two that makes sense. Grouping all three is particularly strange. There are reasons to believe that Alex was contemplating self-destructive behavior. For example, he was treated by a mental health clinician at the college he attended. He was found to have depression and a serious alcohol problem. The same friend who said he had a positive conversation with Alex also told the police that he believed Alex wanted to harm himself. And Alex had a pronounced interest in immortality, religion, and spirituality. He had recently made a commitment to think less and feel more. Nothing can go wrong with this attitude. It's clear that Alex traveled to High Rock of his own volition. He drove himself there, and no substances were detected in his system. Based on his strange behavior, it is reasonable to believe that it was his idea to go to High Rock. Megan had hypothermia when emergency personnel arrived. She almost shared the same fate as Alex. This doesn't seem one-sided, like she intended to kill him. Rather, this was something they were doing together. They were both in danger. Megan didn't die, but she could have died. Furthermore, neither individual was wearing any clothing, and it was about 30 degrees outside. Megan was not well prepared to commit a murder. Considering all the trauma she experienced, Megan was probably disoriented. Perhaps she didn't realize what she was doing or what she was saying to the police. Maybe she didn't lie to the police intentionally. Perhaps Megan confessed to something she did not actually do. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Megan Schaefer was guilty of murder? I believe that Megan did kill Alex intentionally, but I'm not convinced beyond a reasonable doubt on the second-degree murder charge. I probably would have gone with something like manslaughter. Here's what I think happened in this case. This is just a theory, my opinion. 
Alex was an unusual individual with several extreme beliefs. After meeting Megan, he was so impressed with her, he made her the beneficiary for his new financial account. This decision was a result of odd thinking, more than any plans to end his existence. Alex and Megan traveled to High Rock with the intent of engaging in some bizarre ritual. They decided to remove all their clothing as part of this. Megan became angry at Alex for some unknown reason. Maybe it was something related to their romantic relationship, like she wished that they were technically dating. She lost control and pushed Alex off the cliff. Megan then walked down to where he was, came up behind him, and cut his throat. She was in a rage and used more force than was necessary. She wanted to make sure that he was dead. She left the knife at the scene and wandered off in a disoriented state. Megan realized that her fingerprints could have been on the knife, therefore she came up with all these versions of how Alex ended up dead. Megan wanted to escape responsibility. Megan was convicted because of her changing stories and because her demeanor on the stand was not believable. Members of the jury thought that she was being disingenuous and faking her emotional expressions, like she was being overly dramatic at times when it didn't make sense. Megan was not a good actress. When she was done testifying, she displayed a smirk to her family, as if to say she had just manipulated everyone in the courtroom. Now moving to my final thoughts. The case of Megan Schaefer has to be one of the most bizarre homicide cases in recent history. The circumstances leading up to it and the events on the night of the homicide were astonishingly unusual. This case involved bizarre beliefs, a commitment to giving up thinking in exchange for feeling, ferret enhanced cemetery picnics, a cliff, being undressed in cold weather, a brutal attack with a knife, and changing stories about what happened. Megan could have easily escaped responsibility simply by driving away from High Rock and disposing of the knife. Instead, she talked herself into a 30-year prison sentence. The lesson learned in this case is fairly straightforward and obvious. It's a bad idea to be naked on a cliff at night in the freezing cold. That particular combination of variables will probably not lead to a desirable outcome. Those are my thoughts on the case of Megan Schaefer and Alexander Stevens. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.